Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue. Hey y'all, Coach Unified here with a very powerful video. And it's powerful because we're going to answer some extremely important questions about this coronavirus. You need to watch this video all the way to the end because there's a war against biblical truths. And by watching this video all the way to the end and even clicking on one of the links that will be given to you at the end of this video and by hitting the like button and by putting a comment in this video, you send a message to the YouTube algorithm saying that this video is worth watching. YouTube will then give many other people the opportunity to hear this vital information. So do those things. Hit the like button. Make a comment. Watch the video to the end. Click on the links at the end. But also consider posting this video on your Facebook page, in your Twitter account, and anywhere else that it can be seen so this information can get out. By doing so, you will be helping your brothers and your sisters that may not have this information. You will be helping to save lives and you will be rewarded for it by our Father and Creator who wanted this information shared with everybody, talking about His Word. Now, let's get to the power part of this video. Answering the question about the coronavirus. The first question is, is it in the Bible? The answer is emphatically yes, the coronavirus is in the Bible. And many more viruses and plagues are in the Bible. Looking right here in Matthew 24 and verse 7, you see the word pestilence. But when you look up a synonym for the word pestilence, you see plagues epidemics, viruses, endemics, pandemics, diseases, deadly diseases, virulent diseases, which are all terms being used in our news today to describe the coronavirus. The coronavirus is in the Bible. It may be the first of many viruses that we have to look forward to. Now, in chapter 24, this is the Messiah talking to his apostles who asked, how would they know when the end time will come? The Messiah went on to give them hints and clues and tell them what to look for to know that the end time is upon them. In Matthew 24, he talks about the tribulation and what will go on during the tribulation. But notice right here in verse 8, how he says, all of these are the beginning of sorrows. Meaning this stuff occurs before the tribulation. It is after verse 8 that you will start to learn about the actual tribulation. The stuff that comes before verse 8 is what leads up to the tribulation. And you look, the pestilences are given in verse 7. And to know that we're in this time that's being talked about, look what else is listed here in verse 7. Famines are listed in verse 7. Famines is one of the things that will occur in the beginning of sorrows. Are there famines going on around the world? Definitely. There are people starving even in America. You can imagine what's going on in the third world nations these days. And then the nations that are not providing stimulus checks in these hard times. He says earthquakes in diverse places. And by diverse, he means various, miscellaneous, assorted, sundry, several, distinct, desperate, or different. Look at how many earthquakes are going on around the world in places, some of which we've never even heard of. Up there in verse 6, he starts to tell us about wars. 
and rumors of wars. In verse 7, he says, the reason for these wars is that nations shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Does this not remind you of the Arab Spring? And all of the wars that are going on around the world at this time? He's letting us know that we are in the beginning of sorrows. This is the beginning of sorrows. Beginning of griefs, distresses, beginning of troubles and burdens, beginning of disappointment, worries and torments. The coronavirus is just part of the beginning. You have to come all the way down to verse 31 to see when the elect are gathered together. So those that are talking about not having to worry about all of these troubles and sorrows and tribulations on the earth are deceiving many. And what's at the root of their deception? Telling you that you don't have to obey the scripture. You don't have to do what the Bible tells you to do. They tell you that all you have to do is believe hard enough and you will be saved. They never tell you that you have to obey the commandments, the statutes, the precepts, the judgments, the ordinances, the mandates. Well, let me show you one statute that will keep you from getting the coronavirus. You have to understand that if the father told you that these pestilences and stuff was coming on the world, that he must have told you what you should be able to do about it. If his word told you of plagues, his word should have also told you about preventions. Well, you jump over here in the book of Jubilees, chapter 15, and we see how we protect ourselves from these diseases, the pestilences, coronaviruses, COVID-19. Now, we understand that these are translations of the scripture. The original scripture was written in Aramaic or Hebrew. And over here in Jubilees, the word plague is used instead of pestilence. But when we look up the synonym for the word plague, it includes the word pestilence, disease, infections, pandemics, epidemics, outbreaks. And when you look here in the middle of verse 15, he says, and no plague shall come upon them to slay or to smite in that year. This is Holy Scripture telling us how we can protect ourselves from the plagues and from the pestilences, the epidemics and pandemics taking over the world. Let me read the entire verse. He says, and do thou command the children of Israel to observe the Passover throughout their days, every year, once a year, on the day of its fixed time. And it shall come for a memorial well pleasing before the Lord. And no plague shall come upon them to slay or to smite in that year in which they celebrate the Passover in its season in every respect according to his command. This is telling us that by keeping the feast of Passover protects us from the pestilences. That disease is not random. Those that are getting it are not getting it by accident. Those that will not get it will not get it for a reason. And most that will not get it will be those that are keeping the commandments, the statutes, the judgments. Those that will not get it will be those that will be keeping Passover according to the scripture. This is why it's important that you post this video on your Facebook account, in your Twitter account. Send it to your friends. Send it to your loved ones. There are a lot more people in the world that do not believe the scripture, that reject the word of God. And when they clicked on this video and saw that it was about scripture, they clicked off and sent a message to the YouTube algorithm that it wasn't worth watching. Leave a comment letting YouTube know that this is vital information. Hit the subscribe button so YouTube will know that you are interested in this type of information. 
It's like buying an album. It's like paying to see a movie. The YouTube algorithm will promote what it thinks people want to see. And people want the truth. Your loved ones want the truth. Your loved ones want to know what they can do about this coronavirus. Do your part. Help them out. And what is Passover? Passover is the communion feast instituted by the Messiah at the Last Supper. Looking over here in the book of Mark in chapter 14, we can see the Messiah commanding his disciples to drink wine and eat unleavened bread on the evening of the 14th day of the first month, the beginning of Passover. So that what Jubilees was talking about, celebrating the feast of Passover, was to drink wine and to eat bread on a certain night of the year, every year throughout our generations. And we don't have to worry about plagues. So how do you think those that we love, that don't spend as much time in the scripture as they should, and those that reject the scripture altogether will feel when one day they find out that they died of coronavirus because they wouldn't eat unleavened bread and drink wine on a certain day of the year. This is why you have to help get this information out. Most who don't drink at all wouldn't have a problem drinking wine one night out of the year if they knew that the father commanded it and even people that don't like bread will probably eat some to keep themselves from getting the coronavirus that year so do your part help to get this video out send a message to youtube and the rest of the world we want the truth hey y'all Coach in a fight here, answering the question why the Jewish people did not get the Spanish flu of 1819. Now, if you remember our history classes, one of the reasons why Hitler hated the Jewish community was because they did not suffer from the plague like their German brothers. He even blamed them for putting the flu in the water. So why did they not get sick? They were acting like Jews. Now, they were not Jews, hence the suffix ish, like mannish or foolish or childish, but acting like Jews prevented them from getting sick. And what were they doing to act like Jews? Keeping the feast of the Lord found in Leviticus 23 prevented them from being harmed by the plagues. Let me show you the proof. Here in Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 18, we see a connection being made between the Feast of Tabernacles and the plague. It says, And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Notice it does not say that all the heathen will get the plague. It's just the ones that do not keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So being of German descent, those Jewish people would have been Gentiles, but because they would have been acting like Jews and keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, they were protected from getting the plague. So the moral of this story is that we should all be acting like Jews if we want to stay healthy. And the only real way that we can act like Jews is by keeping the feasts of the Lord. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits in the spring, Pentecost or the feast of weeks in the summer, the memorial of blowing of trumpets, atonement day, and the Feast of Tabernacles in the fall are all joyous occasions celebrated by Jewish people all over the world. I guess it can be said that those feast days are kept by healthy people all over the world.
Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here with another one of these old cloudy day videos. Yep, you're looking at Shadow Man, which means that the sun is popping out, and this may be one of the last videos we get to put out on this format. But this one is going to be on the mark of the beast. And the question is, is it possible that this coronavirus that's taking over the world now, this pandemic, that's, you know, running rampant through the United States and the rest of the world. Is it possible that it could have something to do with the mark of the beast? Now, my, my answer is yes, and I'm going to give you some reasons why I think that is. Now, <clears throat> one of the things before we jump into it deeply, we have to understand what the beast is. If we want to talk about the mark of the beast, we have to know, well, who is the beast? What is the beast? And for that, you would have to go in and look at the book of Daniel. Daniel is who tells us, first of all, who the beast is. Now, we've come here and now thinking when we hear the word beast, is this uh, something really scary? Whereas in Daniel and in other parts of the Bible, the word beast just means animal. That's so all it means is, is an animal, any animal you can refer to as a beast whether it be a cow or a horse or a dog or anything like that. And what Daniel is talking about when he talks about the uh, beast is, is how he, he in, in his visions, he was given dreams, him and Nebuchadnezzar and some other people were given visions and dreams back then. And the government systems were portrayed as beasts. In one point, they were portrayed as a lioness. and another point, there was a ram and then it was a goat. And you know, I believe it was a bear at some point described as different animals. But the point is, is that when we talk about beasts and when we get to revelations and we hear the word beast, what that is referring to is our kingdoms, our governments. Those people who run this world are considered the beast. So when you think of the mark of the beast, what you're thinking about is the mark of the government in some way. Now, before I go further, I want to point out the fact that there are many people out here who are studying what the mark of the beast is. There are a lot of people who are, who are doing a lot of research, and you have to give these guys credit because they're spending a lot of time and resources trying to come up with this information for us. And, you know, a lot of time we take them for granted, you know, and especially when they don't quite get things right. But, you know, we... we we still can get information out of what they talk about and you know a couple of there's a couple of camps out there as far as what the mark of the beast is now the first camp is when when you think about the mark of the beast is the the uh, how the government systems particularly the uh, papal government systems is changing the calendar and changing the feast days and even changing the Sabbath day now just to briefly talk on that the reason why they're making the connection between the um, the the changing of the Sabbath day and changing of the feast days as the mark of the beast is because when you look in books like Deuteronomy and other places, Exodus and other places, it describes the Sabbath day and the feast days, particularly unleavened bread, as the mark of the Father. And so, or the sign of the Father, or the token given to the Father. And so it's pretty easy to see how they make a connection that, okay, if the if the feast days and the Sabbath days is the mark of the Father, then, then changing those and doing them on different days or not keeping those would be the mark of the beast. So, after you finish this video and you do some research on the mark of the beast, go ahead and check out those guys because that is a very legitimate argument what they're making there. But in this one, we're going to focus more on the material manifestation of what the mark of the beast is. Now, in that camp, they believe it has something to do with the modern technologies. Um, there's three of them that, you know, that they tend, that people are starting to realize could line up to be the mark of the beast. The one is Bitcoin and all of these cryptocurrencies and how the world is changing over to cryptocurrency. And the reason why they're doing that, they're talking about that one, is because of the whole buying and selling aspect of of the mark of the beast. If we all change over to cryptocurrency, it will be just like money now, just like cash now. You can't buy or sell without a dollar bill here in the United States. Well, if we all switch over to Bitcoin, it will be the same way. Now, what they're adding to that, though, is the RFID chips in the hand. That's where they're getting this thing about putting the, um, the mark in the hand and in the forehead.
But you understand that, you know, now people, there's a lot of people around the world who are getting these RFID chips and are not putting together that it could be related to the mark of the beast because it has nothing to do with buying and selling. Well, of course, if we go to Bitcoin or something like that where, you know, you have to have computers in order to run that stuff, they're going to somehow tie it into a computer that's already under your skin anyway. And then you add that to the... um. 5G technology. When you put the 5G technology together with the other two, it kind of paints a picture of how these bankers, these governments, these B systems, if they ever get those three in place where you have um, a chip under your hand that's ran by 5G technology with your Bitcoin information in it, you can very well see how that's going to be preventing you from buying or selling or doing, you know, just about anything, you know, in, 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 in the economic systems of the world. The the governments will be able to, to control us, track us, and, you know, even a lot of other things when you get into, you know, some of that 5G technology and RFID and stuff and what they what they plan to do there. But you say, well, what? how can this coronavirus, how can it actually promote that? How can this coronavirus bring all of that into effect? Well, you think about um, what what's going on with this coronavirus and how it's, um, it's, bringing out our dependencies on the government system. There's a lot of people who are going hungry. There's a lot of people who are out of work. There's a lot of people who are having to, to depend on the government system way more than we did even a year ago now that we're in this pandemic and people are having to stay home and not be able to go to work, not be able to, to go to school and different stuff. We're starting to realize um, how dependent we are on the system and that dependency seems to be growing every day. We're becoming more dependent on um, the beast system every day. You think of the beast, the government system, as everything to do with civilization um, is, is by way of, of the government systems. You can't name any place in the world that has things like running water or security or education without there being some type of government attached to it. And that's, that's, that's where that's that's what's going on that's why you know we we are being so dependent on the government for those things but the thing about this this pandemic you know it's it's bringing out those dependencies and making us more dependent on those government systems so i think it's easy to see how you know as we get further along there's more people out of work um the virus spreads or whatever you can see how big government agencies like FEMA will start to gain more and more control. Um, maybe even the military by way of the National Guard will start to get more and more control on us. And then if we ever have to depend on FEMA and FEMA camps to take care of us, well, of course, we're going to have to obey and listen to what they say do. And if they tell us that we're going to have to get a microchip or something like that under our hands in order to eat, then, you know, there's a lot of people that's going to line up to get that kind of stuff. They're not going to hesitate to go ahead and get um, whatever it is that's required of them to get in order to feed their children. Um, when you when you take food off the table and get people hungry, a lot of things that, you know, they seem to be important to them in their life, it, it kind of goes away. They, they change their perspective on things when, they, when people start to get hungry. It kind of changes the way we act or whatever. And so, you know, I believe with that we can see how it is that, you know, this coronavirus could actually cause us to head in that direction. Hey y'all, this is Coach in the Fight over here, talking about epidemics, talking about pestilences, talking about plagues and diseases. That's right, we're talking about COVID-19, talking about the coronavirus. And in this one, we want to talk about the cause of coronavirus. In this video, we're going to show you how and why humanity must go through all of these plagues and pestilences here in the last days. I'm looking over here at a verse coming out of the Third Testament of the Bible. It is chapter 55 of the Third Testament of the Bible. You can get a link to this book down there in the description if you haven't done so already. Um, but looking down here at verse 51, it says, Epidemics will fall upon the world. Strange and rare diseases 
diseases before which science will be impotent and a great part of humanity will perish. Now, I'm not here to scare anybody, but I do want to let you know why these diseases are coming up on the world. Because knowledge is power, and if we know why these diseases and pestilences are affecting the world, then you know we have a better chance of staying out of their way and not contracting these illnesses or not perishing from these illnesses. All right? So let me jump over here to another book you may not have heard of, and it's called Second Esdras. In, in the King James Version of the Bible, his name was Ezra. So when you, when you look at the authors of you know, the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, this is the same guy that wrote this book over here. Now, in 2nd Esdras, we're down here in chapter 15. We're going to pull out a few verses from chapter 15 and a few verses out of chapter 16 to show you why these diseases are coming up on the world. What is causing these diseases to be in the world, all right? So, let's look at verse 1. He says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. Now, this is why we're doing this, you know, because, of course, this is the father talking to Ezra or Esdras. But, you know, he's also talking to us, too, telling us to come out and tell the world about these prophecies so that they don't be alarmed, so that people don't get caught off guard. Verse 2 says, And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Now, we thank Ezra for going ahead and taking care of that part for us, as we can see here on this, in this book that he's wrote here. Verse 3 says, Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the in incredulity of them trouble you that speak against thee. Talking about the, the naysayers of the world, there's, there's a lot of people that don't have a lot of faith in the word and a, and a lot of faith in the Father for that matter. And, you know, they, they tend to to you know try to pick on people who do you know people who say you know we should be praying you know these guys are sitting back laughing at us and stuff but he said don't let the incredulity of those guys you know affect us at all don't let them stop us just because they don't know any better verse 4 says for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness you know so hey laugh on if you want to you know, giggle, 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 but, you know, it's going to get pretty serious for you in a little while. That's what it's talking about there in verse 4. Um, and that's that's consistent with what everything else in the Bible talks about. You know, there's a lot of people that's going to perish for their unfaithfulness. Um, we can jump back over to the third testament of the scripture that, you know, basically says the same thing on how it is those who are going to forsake these words that I'm reading to you from the scripture. And they're going to be some of the first ones that are going to perish. Verse five says, behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death and destruction. And see, this is why I wanted to do this class, talking particularly about the COVID-19, which is has a huge effect on the world right now. But he's also talking about the sword, which is wars, uh, famine, which is people going hungry, death. Uh, I think we all know what that is and destruction. Uh, look at verse 6 he says for wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled now see you you might have known that that was going to be the answer that it was because of wickedness that these diseases and, and famines and wars and destruction are coming up on the earth but stay tuned I'm gonna show you why it's coming out of China here as we get down a few more verses all right, let's look at verse 7. He says, Therefore saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and the righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Okay, so 
people tend to define wickedness in various different ways but the thing about the, the way the scripture defines wickedness is breaking the commandments going against what the word says talking about what the commandments that you read over there in the books of Exodus and the books of Leviticus uh, you have some over there in the book of Numbers and the book of Deuteronomy it has a lot of commandments um, and people going against these commandments and you know doing you know like it says profaning the, the the word and this and when they do so they end up in this wickedness that they're talking about but then he goes on and says behold the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me and the souls of the just complain continuously this is how people are going out and are harming persecuting the children of God which are the righteous and then those who are innocent as well people are persecuting them we read in the scripture how evil is dominant in the world today and this this evilness is is having an effect even on the innocent and the righteous you know it's kind of spilling over in places that it shouldn't be but you have people that are actively going in and trying to harm these people we'll see we'll see who they are here in a second I'm going to jump all the way down here to verse 24 of chapter 15. It says, Woe to them that sin, and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. See, this is that wickedness that he was talking about. This is how the scripture defines wickedness, is by not keeping the commandments of the Lord. Talking about those commandments we read about over there in books like Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. When you, when you read over there, um, I'm probably pop you up a verse here, but when you read in the New Testament, sin is the def as defined as breaking the law. Sin is defined as a transgression of the law, meaning, and that law is talking about are these commandments that we read about in the Old Testament. Verse 25 says, I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power, defile not my sanctuary. When when you're talking about the sanctuary now, you're not talking about a building at all. You're not talking about a structure that you can see. This strength, this sanctuary is actually inside of us now. It has something to do with our conscious. Um, it's kind of where the Father dwells, or kind of where the Father speaks to us from, from within. Um, it's, it's a spiritual sanctuary. Verse 26 says. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction. So now what you see out here with all of this coronavirus, with all of these wars, with all of these hate crimes, and all of this stuff that's going on in the world, um, this stuff is not random, guys. This is judgment day that we live in here. And what you are seeing is people who are getting their just judgments. Um, like the Bible said, he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. And that's what you're seeing now in these latter days. Like I said, this is judgment day. But you look right here in verse 27. He says, for now are the plagues come upon the whole earth and ye shall remain in them. For God shall not deliver you because ye have sinned against him. Talking about these plagues here, and this is why these plagues are in the world, is because of man's sin. Not necessarily that the Father is taking vengeance on us so much as that we have created a disharmony with the universe as we create sins. When, when we do stuff against our brother, like the laws of physics says, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when I go out here and I do something to my brother, even though it may seem like I've gotten away with it, that that imbalance is created now in the universe, and now there has to be an equal and an opposite reaction. And because man has gotten away with a lot of stuff, you know, think about your own self and the, you know, the own little stuff you've done in your life. You know, you might might seem petty to you, it might seem petty to some other people, little stuff you've done. But think about how much of it you actually got away with. You know, you you, you wasn't caught stealing the little candy bar or, you know, cheating on a test or 
You wasn't held accountable for, you know, a bad thought that you may have had against somebody or slandering somebody or maybe some wicked thing you did against your brother. You may have seemed like you've gotten away with that, but you've created an imbalance. So you think about the whole world we're talking about and how the whole world have created such an imbalance well now and the times that we're living in now the whole world is making restitution for that the whole world is having to pay that back and that's why you see right here he says plagues will come upon the whole earth and that's why we have this one here this coronavirus now is on every continent except the one continent where no people live at and that's Antarctica but let's go on I want to show you a couple of more verses here now this one is talking about Asia it says it's down here in verse 46 and he says and thou Asia thou art partaker of the hope of Babylon and art the glory of her person Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her, and hast decked thy daughters in whoredom, that they might please and glory in thy lovers, which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. Talking about Asia right now, and how it is like Babylon, and how those guys over in Asia are acting like Babylon. Now, the thing about Babylon, if you remember, you may not may not have heard the story at all, but Babylon is the source of all these pagan religions. All of these pagan religions came out of Babylon. Um, all of your Greek gods were originated there. All, even all of the pagan holidays that they celebrate today originated over there in Babylon. All of the sun god worship and all of that stuff came from Babylon and so now it's pointed out Asia saying that Asia is like Babylon how it says it has decked out thy daughters and whoredom that they might please and glory in thy lovers but look right here in verse 48 he says thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions therefore saith God I will send plagues upon thee widowhood poverty famine sword and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death to waste thy houses with destruction and death so now this is putting a link to these plagues in Asia and then you know the thing about it you know a lot of these plagues that are coming nowadays SARS and all of that originated over there in Asia um, um, in China to be specific and you know here is why it's because China has acted like Babylon and gone on to do the things of Babylon so he says right here they will receive plagues widowhood poverty famine sword pestilence to waste their houses with destruction and death those countries over there, but China in particular, is guilty of targeting the Father's people by way of the churches and things over there in China. You're always hearing of how they're, they're uh, closing churches and arresting preachers and, you know, forbidding Bibles to be in the country and all of that kind of stuff. You know, that's part of the imbalance that we're talking about that's creating these plagues. You look down here in verse 53, he says, If thou hast not always slain my chosen, exalting the stroke of thine hand, and saying over their dead when thou was drunken, yeah. You know, this is this is what they're doing over there in the churches in China. Like I said, they don't even want uh Christians over there. They they don't even they don't even want people of the word in China at all. They're targeting them. They're 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 making sure the Bibles aren't available to people over there in China. And so to me, this is why I'm saying that a lot of these plagues are originated from China. Thing about it, the the uh, Black Death that happened so many hundreds of years ago, that disease originated in China too. That one came from China too. You know, that's why those guys over there in China and South Korea, they're so prepared for these illnesses and stuff is because, you know, they're used to them. 
Okay, now let's jump down here into chapter 16. And again, I'm not going to look at all of the verses here in chapter 16, but you look right here in verse 1, it says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Now, the thing about, you know, Babylon, you know, of course, that was a city a long time ago. And But when you read in Re the book of Revelation, it talks as if Babylon still exists. Well, it does. And you say, well, where is Babylon today? Who is still keeping up all of these pagan religions? Well, you know, that that has a lot to do with the religions that are promoted by the Vatican, <laughs> by those guys over there in Rome and so and in Italy. And so when you look at who's being affected by this new coronavirus, it seems as though it's taking the same path as the Black Death did many years ago, and that's going, you know, starting over there in China, and then working its way through Rome and Italy, and then working its way around the rest of the world. Because you can't just pick on the Catholics and say that they're the only ones involved in these Babylonian type religions. No, we're talking about Easter, we're talking about Christmas, we're talking about Halloween, we're talking about uh, Mardi Gras and Valentine's Day. All of these are Babylonian holidays that, you know, are, you know, being celebrated all around the world and so that's why even America has these diseases and why we will be affected by these diseases over here just like them over there hey y'all go to the fight here talking about the mark of the beast and what they were doing leading up to the flood that caused the Lord to allow such a catastrophic event. We're living in some very troublous times these days. There is a lot going on in both the physical world and the spiritual world. The spiritual stuff is kind of good, you know, if you're thinking about the Great Awakening and all of that. But it's like the stuff going on in the material world is trying to prevent that great awakening from taking place. It appears to me as though this mark of the beast is set up to go a long way as far as trying to put a halt to the spiritualization of humanity. Now, I know the eschatology and I know there's nothing they can do to stop the great awakening or stop the third temple for those whose names is written in the book of life but what about the other 7.5 billion people that's on the planet so in this class we're going to focus primarily on what was going on previous to the flood because that is what you would call an extinction level event one of our musicians a guy named Buster Rhymes is promoting his new album it's called ELE2 I had to look that up to find out what an ELE1 was and that is an extinction level event an extinction level event is a widespread or rapid decrease in the biodiversity of the earth in other words something happening to the earth where a lot of the living creatures on the surface of the planet and maybe even under the water are killed so if he's talking about this extinction level event two when was the extinction level event one when we're talking about an extinction level event we're talking about over 70% of life on the planet going away so when was the last time this event took place that would be the flood of Noah remember Noah's Ark the flood of Noah would be the ELE1 or the first extinction level event and now we have our artists promoting the idea of the second extinction level event now I'm not an expert on this stuff by any means 
and I know many of you guys have been studying this information more than I have but one thing we need to understand as far as how they're planning to cure this plague is that they plan to use what's called messenger RNA or mRNA now I've been studying this a little bit as I was preparing to do this class is actually what prompted me to do this class was this messenger RNA because it seems to me that they're actually changing the DNA that's what the messenger part of the RNA is is that it's actually changing the RNA or changing the DNA of a person to where they are immune to the plague so now where my expertise does lie is in the scripture and this reminded me of what was going on over there back there in Genesis in chapter 6 which is where we read about the events that happened right before the flood you see in verse 5 of chapter 6 it says and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his hearts were only evil continually we see that this is why the Lord repented of even having created man verse 7 gives us another hint and it says and the Lord said I will destroy man whom I'm created from the face of the earth both man and the beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air for repent of me that I have made them so he's destroying man for their wickedness but he's also allowing the animals to be destroyed well to understand why we have to jump over to the book of Jasher in chapter 4 just like the book of Jubilees and chapter 5 it gives the same account of what went on with more detail it is in Jasher chapter 4 and verse 18 we can see what it was that they were doing whereas Genesis says they were being evil Jasher tells us what evil they were actually doing verse 18 says and their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice and the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and taught the mixture of animals and species with the other in order therewith to provoke the Lord and God saw the whole earth and it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth all men and all animals well here is why the men and the animals were destroyed just like we learned over there in Genesis that these are watchers that are standing over mankind better known as fallen angels well this is the part of the story where those fallen angels took wives and married them these are angels marrying humans this is what created the giants that we hear about in the book of Revelation and if you ever doubt one of these giants ever existed just pop on the Google and type in human giant fossils and you will see where they are still discovering the skeletons of these humans these giants that were some 30 feet tall but look at this part it says and the sons of men in those days took from the cattle and of the earth the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and taught the mixture of the animals of one species with another they're actually mixing species now before you think this is as simple as mixing a Rockweiler with a German Shepherd that's not what they're talking about it said the word species one species with another so what is a species a species is a group of living organisms consisting of similar individuals capable of exchanging genes or interbreeding so a Doberman Pinscher and a Rockweiler are of the same species we know that simply because they can interbreed that's like a horse and a donkey are of the same species because they can interbreed 
a tiger and a lion can interbreed a goat and a sheep can interbreed but when we look over here they were taking the cattle of the earth and the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and interbreeding them how are they mixing a cow and a bird to get the answer to this question we actually don't have to go too far because turns out we're still doing it man is still mixing different species of animal together just a quick search on YouTube and I found the video called the 13 insane creatures created by scientists check this out mankind's ability to control nature is beginning to get out of control animals are being cloned hybrids are being created and jellyfish DNA is being used to make all kinds of things blow whether they were meant to exist on this planet or not it's already too late here are insane creatures created by scientists what color would you like your fish to be when it glows in the dark starfire red cosmic blue or galactic purple these glowfish are the first genetically engineered pets on the market to become available to the public but that doesn't mean you'll find them everywhere jellyfish DNA or DNA from other sea creatures is inserted into embryos of zebrafish which will result in a glow-in-the-dark type fish other DNA from coral, sea anemones, and sea pansies are used to make them glow in different colors. They were extremely popular when they first went on shelves in Taiwan, selling for $18 each. It's believed that they were originally created to be released into water and become fluorescent when toxic water is present. So, did you hear that? How are they creating this glow-in-the-dark fish? Jellyfish DNA or DNA from other sea creatures is inserted into embryos of zebrafish which will result in a glow-in-the-dark type fish. So they're taking the DNA from a jellyfish which is an entirely different species because they can't interbreed and mixing them with a fish and creating a whole nother species of animal that didn't exist. And you're looking back over here at Jasher it says that they did this in order therewith to provoke the Lord and God saw the whole earth and it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth all men and all animals and what was the result of them mixing these species together our first known extinction level event that has taken place on the earth that's right almost all humans and animals were destroyed from off the earth in fact all of them were except those who the father protected by way of an ark everything else was killed everything else that has the breath of life in it died during that flood so is this what humans are doing to themselves as we now use our technologies and our abilities to change the human DNA my question is how could it not how can we really expect to change the DNA of a human being I mean we were created by our father in heaven now what he's created is going to be changed and we're not just talking about a few people they're planning on giving this to every person on the planet so their intention is to change the DNA of every human on earth to what hey y'all coach in the fight here talking about the mark of the beast and the feast of tabernacles they are related and we're going to find out how in this video now recently in the news at least in the alternative news there have been a lot of talk about the coronavirus COVID-19 and this vaccine and how one if not both may have a connection between the mark of the beast that we hear about over there in the book of Revelation 
and you know you hear a lot of people talking about how they're not going to take it a lot of people you know who you know say they'll go it alone they're not going to take their chances because of recent news from AstraZeneca on how this uh, potential vaccine that they're working to get onto the market has caused some neurological problems one of the people taking the vaccine reported that they had been affected spiritually I think their words were they've killed God I can no longer feel God my soul is dead well even those who were in a bit of denial about the vaccine being the mark of the beast kind of uh, had to take a second look if you know what I mean well in this video we're going to show you how it is that our father wanted us to protect ourselves from plagues and COVID 19s and pestilences and stuff like that I mean we hear about them all in the scripture we're over here in Matthew and chapter 24 and verse 7 where it's talking about how in the end times during what's called the beginning of sorrows there would be pestilences along with earthquakes and famines and that kind of stuff so one should ask okay if our father warned us about these pestilences that were coming didn't he give us some way to protect ourselves from them and the answer is yes when we come over here and look at Zechariah and chapter 14 we see that the plagues are actually a punishment for people who don't keep the Feast of Tabernacles you see there in verse 19 it says this shall be the punishment for all the nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles and what it's talking about it says okay first of all these people won't get any rain and if you look around the nation you'll see that a lot of the farmers are talking about droughts that are occurring around the world verse 18 says and if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles so it's like the rain is a warning and if those people the dwellers of modern day Egypt don't bother to keep the Feast of Tabernacles then they will get the plague and you could assume that the opposite is true for those who keep the Feast of Tabernacles won't be harmed by the plague but let me show you something over here in Leviticus 23 as I'm trying to instill the importance of these feast days you read over here in verse 17 to 23 how it's actually talking about how we are supposed to keep three feasts in a year which include the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of Tabernacles as well as Pentecost then notice how it goes on to talk about how he would actually send us an angel to help us to get through the tribulation and help to bring us into the promised land this is who is known as the covenant angel look in here chapter 24 and verse 7 of the book of Exodus you see it is what we were reading just a second ago was the book of the covenant it's also referred to as the book of the law in many places throughout the Bible well when you look over here at Malachi and chapter 4 verse 4 our father is telling us to remember this law this covenant that was given to Moses on Mount Horeb and he says that if he does he will send Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord this is that covenant angel that we read about over there in Leviticus 23 so again this is pointing out the importance of the feast not only is it necessary for us to have this protection that will help us to survive all of the events that are part of this tribulation and apocalypse and even to help us to enter what we know as the kingdom of God but in the meantime we see that it is actually helping to prevent us from getting the plague so we won't have to worry about vaccines or coronaviruses and that such this is our father's way 
these are our father's therapeutics this is what he put here for our protection so check our channel for some other videos we've been doing on the Feast of Tabernacles we've been covering this subject for a number of years now putting out instructional videos so if you got something out of this video go ahead and hit the like button if you didn't go ahead and hit the dislike button if you have any further questions for me please feel free to add them down there in the comment section I'll probably have a video on the subject if not I may even create one based on your comment and may our father bless you and keep you may our father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may our father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace